Alabama has had a ridiculous line of elite quarterbacks. It started with A.J. McCarron, then it went to Blake Sims, then Jalen Hurts, then Tua Tungavaloa, then Mac Jones, and most recently Bryce Young. Only one of those guys ended up winning the Heisman Trophy, but all of them ended up getting a shot in the NFL to some degree, were great in their time at Alabama, and were all stars coming out of high school. Looking ahead to the 2022 and 2023 seasons, Alabama will have Bryce Young for this year, but after that, things get a little bit cloudy. They brought in five-star Ty Simpson in the 2022 class, and there are other guys on their radar, but you cannot forget one guy who could be a secret weapon that Alabama is hiding from all of us. In today's video, I want to talk about Alabama's current backup quarterback, how he went off this spring, who he is, and why he could be the best kept secret on this Alabama roster, and could be the future star of this program. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Before we take a look at this best kept secret at quarterback, we first need to talk about the three Alabama quarterbacks who have set the recent standard for Crimson Tide football. The first one is obviously Tua Tungavaloa. Coming out of Hawaii, he was a five-star recruit and he had immediate hype. After he took over and won the national championship, Tua quickly got his name out there and became one of the top quarterbacks in all of college football. Going into 2019, the Tide had an unbelievable amount of hype and he was projected to win the Heisman Trophy. He got off to a great start, but as we all know, he ended up getting hurt. But just how good was he in 2019? Well, in his first four games, he combined for 23 touchdowns. That is incredible. And then add in the fact that they won every single one of those games and he didn't have a single pick. He was pretty much on his way to winning the Heisman and after great games against Tennessee and Texas A&M, he would just have to show out against LSU. Unfortunately, despite 400 yards and four touchdowns, LSU was just the better team that year and Burrow was the better player and Bama ended up losing that game. And then the following week, he went down with that devastating injury against Mississippi State and he was done. In nine games, he threw for nearly 3,000 yards and 33 touchdowns. And that was just the beginning. The next player we need to talk about is Mac Jones. He was a little known three-star recruit coming out of high school. And after flipping from Kentucky to Bama, he took off in 2020. He beat out five-star freshman Bryce Young for the job, and in his first game against Missouri, he threw for nearly 300 yards and two touchdowns. These were average numbers, but in week two, Jones showed he was legit. He threw for 435 yards and four touchdowns in a win over number 13 Texas A&M, and followed it up with back-to-back 400-plus -back yard games and wins on the road against Ole Miss and Georgia. In that game against the Dogs, he also had four touchdowns, and then he led them to an easy win over Tennessee. He continued to get better as the season went on, as he threw for 300 yards and four touchdowns against Mississippi State, 300 yards and five touchdowns in a win over Auburn, and 400 yards and four touchdowns against LSU. He also didn't have a single interception in those three games, and he only threw an interception in four games all year. One of those would come in the SEC Championship, but that was also one of his best games, as he threw for over 400 yards and a season-high five touchdowns and a win over the number seven Gators, which would get them to the college football playoff. Jones would then have a nearly perfect game against Notre Dame in the semifinal before he would have 464 yards and five touchdowns to go out with a national title and the best game of his career. Jones ended up becoming a first round pick and he once again proved the Bama standard. So who would take over in 2021? Well, we all know it was Bryce Young. He was a five-star player and he flipped from USC to Bama. He started in week one against Miami and set the tone right away. He threw for nearly 400 yards and four touchdowns and they went over the Canes and then he continued to cruise throughout the year. He had five touchdowns against Southern Miss, four touchdowns and 400 yards and a win over Mississippi State, 300 yards and five touchdowns against New Mexico State, and then he had the record-setting game in which he threw for 559 yards and five touchdowns and a huge home win over number 21, Arkansas. He also led them to a comeback win against Auburn, which would get them to the SEC Championship, where he'd have 400 yards and three touchdowns as they would beat Georgia to clinch a spot in the college football playoff. Young would play great against Cincinnati in the first round, but he ended up having his worst game of the season against Georgia in the title game, as he threw two interceptions, one of which was very costly and lost in the game. In the process, Young did win the Heisman, and he has set himself up to be the number one overall pick in 2023, but who's going to be after him? And it is none other than redshirt freshman quarterback Jalen Milrow. But who the heck is he? Well, Milrow was born and raised in the Lone Star State and eventually got to Tompkins High School, which is located in Katy, Texas, and he became a star there. As a senior, Milrow was a great player as he completed 131 of 211 passes 
for 2,689 yards and 29 touchdowns. It doesn't stop there though, as he also ran for nearly 400 yards and 8 scores on the ground, and this guy could do a little bit of everything. He was a breakout star on the recruiting scene, and was also a high-end recruit, which is why he got an Alabama offer in May of 2019. After that, he decided to enjoy a visit to Tuscaloosa. More specifically, in July of 2019, it looked like Milrow was ready to pull the trigger, but a different guy beat him to it. If we go across the country, there is a guy named Drake May from North Carolina, who was also one of the top high school quarterbacks in the nation. He also had an Alabama offer, and he beat Milrow to it as he punched in his ticket and committed to Nick Saban. A few months later though, May decided he was going to go back home to North Carolina, and this left a spot open. Except, Milrow had already gone with Plan B, which was the Texas Longhorns. He decided to commit there, and was a pledge for quite a while before he eventually decided to part ways from the Horns. He said, quote, I want to say thank you to Coach Tom Herman and Coach Tim Beck for recruiting me, and giving me the opportunity to chase my dreams and further my academic and athletic career. I also want to thank Coach Mike Yurkich, and I know I was not initially your guy, but you continued to build a relationship with me. I decided to decommit from Texas and commit to another university that shares my vision and aspirations. With that being said, I will be committing to the University of Alabama. Yeah, he not only decommitted from Texas, but he flipped to Alabama in the process. The Longhorns are seemingly fine though, as they already had Hudson Carr on the roster, and then they brought in Malik Murphy in the 22 class, and brought over Quinn Ewers from Ohio State. Milrow was seemingly going under the radar though, as not a lot of people were talking about his commitment to Bama. One scout said, quote, Milrow passes the eye test, and he's a quarterback who can make you pay running or throwing. His size and speed makes him a lethal threat to score any time he pulls the ball down to run, and he is a howitzer for an arm. He did. In fact, in his three high school football seasons, he passed for 5,350 yards with 52 touchdowns and only 13 picks. He also ran for 1,200 yards and 18 touchdowns, and in 2020 specifically, he led his team to a 10-1 record in a deep playoff run in the state of Texas, which as you know, is huge for high school football. This guy was a big deal, but was going under the radar, as according to 24-7 Sports, Milrow was a four-star recruit, the number 13 quarterback, and the 82nd best player in the class of 2021. He arrived at Alabama as the third string quarterback behind Bryce Young and Paul Tyson, and he'd actually get an opportunity to play in four games. He registered stats in all four games, but his best moment came against Southern Miss as he threw a 24-yard touchdown pass. He finished the year at 41 yards and one score, obviously. Going into 2022, it looked like he was already being replaced, though. They brought in big-time Tennessee high school football quarterback Ty Simpson, and Milrow was kind of seen as the third option. But in the spring game, Milrow showed his potential. He finished the A game 11 of 23 for 149 yards and one touchdown, one of which was a 52-yard pass to Christian Leary. Bryce Young said, quote, I feel like he's developed a lot during the spring, and a lot of that came to light today. Saban also had this to say. Obviously, Jalen can make plays running the ball, and he made some today, but he also made great throws. We were especially conscious of the fact that we're not going to do the things that he could do in the spring, and we are going to make him run the offense, try to become a better passer, and try to become a better pocket present. I think he made a lot of progress in those areas. As I watched highlights of him in the A game, this guy just seems to have the athletic burst, the confidence, and the physical traits to be a good quarterback, and I'm surprised that more people aren't talking about him. He's been getting a lot of hype in the recent weeks, and not only could he have an opportunity to be the backup this year, but maybe he'll occasionally get a chance to play. Unless something really tragic happens to Bryce Young, there's no way that he stays around for 2023, so that battle will likely come down to Simpson, Milrow, and potentially Arch Manning or Eli Holstein. Those last two have yet to commit, but if it does come down to Simpson and Milrow and another high school quarterback that's not Manning, I think Milrow could be the starting quarterback, and if not, he could transfer and start at any other program in the nation. I was not super high on Jalen Milrow before this spring, but I'll admit, he looked really good, and he is probably one of the best kept secrets in college football, and of course, Nick Saban got his hands on him. But what do you guys think? If you're an Alabama fan, what do you think of the current quarterback room? What is your thoughts on Milrow, and how is the quarterback position going to look in the next few years? Be sure to let me know down below. If you're a fan of another school, let me know another player or topic I can take a look at in my next video, and don't forget to like and subscribe before you go. Also, be sure to check out all my other videos on the end screen, I hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, Peace.